Hi, in this section, we are going to discover the first method of creating forms in Angular, and that is via template driven forms and how to do form validation for it. We will see the types of form validation in Angular and how to use ng-model to apply control over input fields. And then we will see an example of form validation. And we will learn how to use ng-invalid and ng-touch CSS classes to style our input fields when their inputs are invalid. In Angular, to apply validation to a form, there are two ways. One way is from the template view where we can apply some directives to achieve control on the form. This way is named template driven forms. The other method is applied by creating the control object inside the component and this way is named reactive forms. Both ways have cons and pros, but in short, Reactive forms require more code but gives more control, while on the other hand, template driven is simpler but gives less control. In this section, I will talk about the template driven method. So we have here a simple form that includes two fields, username and password, and I want to apply validation to this form using the template driven method. So here I'm providing the HTML which uses which has a form and inside this form I have two input fields. One is text for username and the other one is of type password. Each one of them are associated with a, a label both of them has a name and ID. There is also a special CSS style you can find on the app component.css to style this form. Don't worry about the code here and the CSS. This is made on Flex and this is not the concern of this uh, video, but I will attach the source code for those forms and you will find it along with this video. So to apply controls in Angular, there is form control which we can apply to each input field. And by creating an instance of this class, I can acquire many information from the associated input field, such as is dirty or pristine, where those define the field value if it has been changed or not. So dirty if the field value has been changed and pristine if not. The other information is touched and untouched, where those define the field input has been visited. So if visited, it's the touched will be true. Otherwise, untouched will be true. And then if the value of the input field is valid and the error generated for this specific value in case of invalidation. So in our form, I will apply a directive and Angular will create control object that will be assigned to an input field. The directive I will use is called ng-model. We already saw this directive before when we talked about double binding in Angular. So here, I will use it to apply control and on a certain input field. So let's try to add this ng model for the input field for username. So I'll type here ng model. And don't forget that to register ng model in order to use it, I should import this model forms model from the library at Angular forms. Then I should register the forms model in import. So let me back to the app component.html. Don't forget when I use ng model for validation, 
that I should also assign a name to the input field. Otherwise, we will get an error because Angular requires a way to distinguish the control object. Now, in order to do the validation and to acquire information about the input field state, I need to create an instance of the class form control. All I need to do is to create a template variable of this field. So let me name it here username and I will assign it to ng model. So now Angular create an instance of the class form control. So let us now add some validation. To add validation control to input field, we should add some condition attribute, such as maximum length, minimum length, or required. So let's add the required attribute. We'll add here required. That means now our input field username is required. Then I will add an error message next to this field that should appear only if the field has not a value. Okay, so I will add a div here. Inside the div, I will add my error message here. This field is required. Okay, this message should only appear if the input field value is invalid. So I will add a condition ngf equal username dot valid and this should be not. So in short what I'm saying that this message should appear if the username value is invalid. So let's check our navigator and see the result. Okay, now we see the error message directly because by default the input field is empty. So let's try to type something. Great! So the error message has been appeared because we add a value to the input field username. Actually, it would be nicer to make the error message showed in red. So let me add a CSS class here. So let me go to the app component.css and let me give some space here. And I will add a, a class error message that should be shown in red. I also added some other specifications for styling. Now I will add this class to the div message. Error message. Here I would say class equal error message. It's also nicer if we show the error message only if the user tab the input field then left without filling this field. So to do so, I should add another condition. And this condition is touched. So and username touched. Save. So now let's check the navigator to see the result. Okay, the error message didn't appear by default. So let me touch the input field. Let me leave. Great, you see now the error message only appear when I click, when I visit the input field and leave without filling the value. And it's shown in red. Okay, let me do some formatting here. So this should be easier for visualization. Okay, great. Now let's be more specific in showing errors. For now we show the error message anytime the control field validator is invalid without any specification. But in Angular there are built-in validators that are based on the HTML form validation attribute. So what are those attributes? Text field is required for a user to fill out and the mid length and the max length those attributes will enforce to minimum or maximum length for the input field and pattern attribute that let us run regular expression validation against the input value great so let me back to the to our view template and let's refactor our example and add another validation attribute 
So let's say here I will add min length equal 5. That means that the username minimum length should be 5 characters. Now I'll customize the error message. So if the input field is touched and the value is invalid, I should catch what type of invalidation error I have to show. And then I have to show the corresponding error. Okay, so let me go to here and add two more divs. This is the first, the second, and then I will add the class, the error class. For each div. So the first div will be for the required at validation attribute. And the second one, I will add another error message here. I will say the minimum length should be five characters. Okay. And I should add an ng if condition and here I will say username dot errors dot required let me copy this and the other one so this one guess what should I say instead of required write me length save okay so let's take our code again you see here I have a container div which will catch the invalidation error. So if it's in if it's invalid and the field is touched, then here I will do the specification. So if the error if of type required, then show this message. Otherwise, if the error, the type of error is mid length, then Show this. Okay, now let's check the navigator and see our, the result. Okay, let me touch the field and leave. Great, so now I have the first error message. Now let me type a character. Great, you see, the first message has left, disappeared, and now I have another message. So let me type more than five characters. Just disappeared when the minimum length arrive to 5. Now it would be nicer if I can customize the error message here. So you see the number 5? It could be nicer if I can interpolate it instead of hard code it. So here what I will say username the errors that me length that required length and required length here will contain the minimum length let's check the navigator and see now let me check the navigator at and see oh, hey you see the five characters okay great now let's try something different i'll apply the control over the password input field so let me go here to our input field I will add a pattern regular expression pattern to our password field so our pattern here I'm not going to go through it but in short the pattern here is requiring that the password value should contain at least one minimum one capital letter and one number and one small letter so again, our pattern here is requiring that I should at least have one small letter, one capital letter, and one number. So let me apply a validation error message here, as we did for our username. So let me copy this and paste it here. And again, I will apply ng model for this field. And I will add a variable template. I will name it password and assign it to ng model. Then here I will replace username by password. And here I will show instead of required, I will say pattern 
and I will delete the other div because I only have one error. Okay, so let me customize the error message. Your password should have one small letter, one capital letter, and one number should at least have. Okay, it's a long error message actually. Anyway, I forgot to change this one here to password. Okay, let me go to the navigator and see this long error message. Okay, so let me type something. I'll type a small letter. Okay, so I forgot that I should leave the input field when I type. So let me type something now. So I'll type small letter. Oh, I get the error message. So let me type a number and now I will type capital letter. You see the long huge error message just disappear. Excellent. Okay, one last thing before I wrap it up for this video. Let me inspect our input field here. So let me inspect our field. Okay. So you see our field here, the input field. Let me go to the class. So aside of the input control, which a class we assigned to our input field, we see there are other classes added automatically by Angular, like ng pristine, ng invalid, ng touched. Those classes has been applied dynamically so I can use those classes to show the state of the input field. Like for example, I can show the border color of the input field in red when the value is invalid. So let me apply this. Let me go to the app component.css and say, okay, so in case the Input control has also the class ng touched and ng invalid. Let the border be in red. So let me save and check the result on our navigator. Okay, so let me type something. You see, great. Whenever the input field is invalid, the border will be colored in red. Great. So in this video, we learn how to apply validation using the template driven forms and we learn how to use the ng model to instantiate the control form of an input field we also learned how to style our input fields depending on the ng invalid ng touched and ng pristine which automatically applied by angular